So hello to our listeners and our attendees. <laughs> My name is Eleni. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Base Beauty Creative Agency. And um, we are very excited to welcome you to, you to today's event, which uh, recaps our findings from an industry brainstorm that we had a few weeks ago, uh, all focused on sustainability and how we can reimagine packaging and retail. So for the next 30 minutes, um, we will uh, talk with you. I'm joined today by our founder and creative director, Jody Katz. Hi. Hi, Jody. Our director of strategy, Robin Plackey. Hello. And our design director, Elisa Vitali. So um, we are going to share a, a deck with you with our findings and walk you through all of this. If you have anything, any questions or anything to add, you can use the chat function or the question and answer function at the bottom of your screen. And if there's anything that we don't have time to address within this event, then we will be sure to send you a note afterwards. Um, at following the event, we will send a recap with the link to this recorded webinar, as well as the deck so that you can share with industry friends um, as you like. So I will share my screen and turn it over to Jody. Thanks, Eleni. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so this is a really um, fun project for us because um, as humans, my team is um, super focused on, you know, kind of how to make the world a better place. Um, and we are um, not blind to the fact that the industry we work in is just sort of filled with stuff, stuff that gets um, thrown out or theoretically um, recycled. So it's always been on our mind. And with COVID and like the changes in our life that COVID created, um, there seemed to be um, a stronger sense of urgency for us to um, not let these conversations um, disappear. You know, if you think about your COVID life, um, you might be doing more takeout containers from restaurants, like all that stuff ends up in the garbage. Um, we've been told, don't take mass transit, don't carpool, drive by yourself wherever you're going, right? This is totally counter to everything we've been learning through the years. So we're really excited to bring you um, our research and insights and learning and ideas. We can go to the next slide, Eleni. Okay, so um, we wanted to give thanks to um, the people who joined us on this brainstorm a few weeks ago. I'm Suzanne Fox um, and um, how do I pronounce his name, Eleni? Hey, hi. Hey, hi. Um, from Decoupage and Assemblage, they're based in New York, and Patrick Cronin, who's also a packaging expert, um, they joined us for this brainstorm. And what's um, kind of funny or ironic about this is, you know, we're working with vendors in this space who make things that get thrown away, and we're asking them to rethink the way they do their business. Um, and uh, they were really game for it. So I want to um, give them a shout out and a thank you. So um, let's move to the next slide. Um, okay, the goals of this brainstorm um, is to not say, let's have an argument or discussion about what type of plastic is better, how to recycle things differently, how to get more efficiency in the systems. We really wanted to break it down to something really simple, which is this, how to make less trash, like how to make less waste. Um, so there are over 51 trillion microplastic particles in our oceans. Um, there'll be more plastic in our oceans than fish by 2050, which is really not that far away. Um, we produce over 8.5 8 .8 billion tons of plastic globally since the 1860s. And, um, you know, it just, it, it's enough and we can do better in beauty. So, um, like I said, the focus of this brainstorm and the research that we did was on making less waste. How do we move to product packaging from wasteful to waste aware? Um, and uh, we also focused on what the consumer does with the packaging after she uses it, right? After she uses the goop. Um, and then, um, you know, what can we do to solve these problems and go deeper into this conversation and really push our industry forward? So there is inspiration here. Um, and it's this woman in this photo where you see her with a mason jar on her head. Um, I don't know her. <laughs> She's an influencer <laughs> that I follow, but her name is Lauren Singer and her handle is Trash is for Tossers. So in that tiny little mason jar on her head, that's all the waste she made in one year. So um, that's pretty impressive. I want you to see this picture um, on the opposite side of the page. That's just one month of my beauty trash. <laughs> okay, so look at her mason jar from one year of her whole entire life and that pile that I made in just one month and just like beauty personal care. Um, so, you know, when I look at that pile that I made, like so many plastic bottles, so many boxes, um, so many caps, so many little vials and jars, 
um, there's got to be a better way. So Lauren started living zero waste um, in 2012 and her social media feed is really fascinating. She gives a lot of tips um, and you know, really um, uh, kind of um, glamorizes the life of living more waste free. And uh, she was our total inspo for this brainstorm. Okay, now I'm gonna pass this off to Elisa. Oh, no, okay. to Robin. Who am I passing <laughs> this off to? You can keep talking. I mean, either anyone who wants to jump in, these are just some of the efforts that we saw as we did our research to look at the industry and see who are other brands who are making us proud and doing things that um, are fitting in this sustainable story that we want to be talking more about. Right. Okay. So um, was I supposed to present this slide, Eleni? That'd be great. <laughs> okay. So, you know, what I think is notable about this is like base beauty is not like we're inventing something new. Like we're not inventing anything here, right? Brands are doing this, other industries are doing this, and we just want to steal those good ideas, right? Um, some industries <laughs> have been slower to this, some have been faster. Um, we really want to make an effort to show that being um, waste aware and less waste as an industry can be, can still be glamorous. It can still be engaging. It can still be like opening a present and feeling good about yourself when you make a purchase. So, um, you know, the Secret and Old Spice brand just announced that they're um, doing their deodorants in paperboard tubes. And paperboard tubes are um, a type of packaging format that we like a lot um, in the industry because it's very little waste there. Um, you know, we have brands, and your method did this a long, long time ago, but having the liquids in these small packs that can be folded down and they're not hard plastics. Um, I would love this in my life. You know, I don't feel like I need to have more shampoo bottles to recycle. Um, and then there's a magazine that just launched called Display Copy. And they, it's a fashion magazine. They only show off clothes and accessories that are used, right? So it's like secondhand stores, thrift shops, eBay finds. And um, that really inspired me. And then of course there's brands that are making waterless products, right? So um, less waste and energy use in shipping products um, and less uh, waste in the packaging associated with it. And a few more. Um, right, we've been talking about refillables. Um, I'm kind of meh meh on refillables because I feel like, well, if you can just put the pod, if you have the pod that holds the goop, why do I need the outer container, right? So, but you know, I like that, you know, some brands are trying to get closer and think about the user experience. Um, of course, the products that are concentrated, like this um, hand soap here um, comes in, you know, one of those little pods and then gets um, added water to be, um, use in the pump like that to me is so exciting you know, like a lot less plastic containers and um like i talked about with method so those um flat pack uh, refills are really exciting to me okay now i will jump in and talk about um some research that we did um we're very data driven at base beauty creative agency so when, whenever we're working on projects we like to dive a little deeper and see what it what other brands are doing and what the industry is talking about and most importantly, a lot of the time, what the consumer is saying. So we did look at the landscape and we talked to some people about this topic. Um, so some top line insights. Um, we know that sustainability is not just something that affects the beauty industry, right? It's a conversation for every industry. Um, and across all the different industries, people produce over 300 million tons of plastic annually, and half of it is for single use purposes. Um, the beauty industry, with all of that plastic being created, the beauty industry is taking the lead in the um, waste and we're creating more than 120 billion units of packaging every year. Um, so we know that there are cons and, and reasons why brands are not jumping onto this um, effort right now and some of them are because you know there are slow timelines or high cost, um, there's lack of regulation um, discouraging them from packaging sustainably. So those are some things that we talked about um, as we thought about workarounds. Of course, there are major pros. If refillable containers were used for cosmetics, as much as 70% of carbon emissions associated with the beauty industry could be totally eliminated. Um, we're also talking to the consumers, Gen Z and millennials, who are really craving um, sustainability, and they are willing to pay more uh, for their products in order to be more sustainable, which is something that we saw that's specific to these age groups and these consumers. 
And as Jody talked about, COVID-19 has, of course, encouraged, you know, almost made this a little bit of a step backwards in that we're now encouraged to use single use um, products and packaging. Okay, so we just had to ask, we conducted a small survey um, with a small sampling of consumers and asked people who um, lived through COVID-19 uh, how their views on sustainability have shifted. Well, lived through, we're still in it, but um, you know, have been through this with us and, and understand how their sustainability views have shifted. So um, our stats were overwhelmingly, you know, 100% of the people who we asked some of these questions are interested in more sustainable options. They're frustrated with the options that they have right now, and they would choose to purchase more sustainable packaging options if these options were presented to them in a clear way or if they have the options um, from brands. Okay, so some of the poll quotes that we thought were interesting, what do you find frustrating about Beauty Package? Um, all the plastic tubes, cartons, why are we still doing this? <laughs> um, too much board, too thick, no refillable options, um, not being able to get all the product out, not many options, so much waste, so much garbage, um, people who are looking to recycle, other categories make it easier to be sustainable, um, pumps, the plastic stick is wasteful and doesn't let me get everything out. So definitely some frustrations here. Okay, so this is where uh, our, our team came together with um, and talked about solutions for this. How can we help? Um, COVID-19 has made me more aware of the choices I make when purchasing. Um, I don't have to compromise my personal health and safety to be sustainable. And um, I find myself in a conflict of trying to be sustainable, but being required to use single-use items on a daily basis in order to maintain cleanliness. So we went into the brainstorm thinking about all of these new um, layers onto the conversation and talked about how we can solve for them with those hurdles. And Alini, before we bounce off this page, you know, I back to like why beauty, like why are we, you know, kind of forcing this conversation on our clients and friends in the industry is because um, sustainability um, is not in conflict with, or less waste, I should say, is not in conflict with COVID safety for the industry of beauty. Maybe it is for transportation, right? Mass transit, do I want to be on mass transit? Do I not? Uh, may maybe it is for um, restaurants. Do I want to eat in the restaurant or should I just, would I be more comfortable taking the food home, right? So those are like about safety, but um, mm -hmm. COVID and packaging waste are not tied together. So we really implore industry to keep pushing this forward and not to let COVID get in the way because um, we've all kind of started to live a little bit more of a simpler life. And wouldn't I like to have fewer shampoo bottles to get rid of every month? Absolutely. Do I, do I like any of them? No. <laughs> you know, so this is really a time and an opportunity for us to revisit the way that we've been living and just accepting the way things have been um, for something better. Great. Um, so these were our brainstorm goals. And for the next 15 minutes, we'll just take you through what the brainstorm resulted in. Um, so I just want to um, talk about these a second. How do we think beyond the jar or the tube, right? So, um, I mean, I have so, I'm at my desk in my home office and I have so many tubes and jars sitting next to me for clients um, and just friends in the industry that send me products and um, there's better. There, you know, it's just all of these things are going to end up, you know, even if I uh, want to recycle some of them, the information on the container really isn't suitable for me to recycle in my area. Um, so that can change. And then the other part of this, which is so tied to beauty and might be what's uh, a standout for our industry is the experience, right? What is it, how do I rep replicate that, like opening the box and having all the layers and having like the outer curtain and then that liner and then the bottle and then the special cap and then the special actuator and then the special label. Um, like how do I replicate the specialness of beauty, um, but simplifying all the elements of waste? Right, so that's a great transition to this slide. So one of the lenses that we viewed our ideas through um, was that sustainability has to look different for the beauty consumer, right? As Jody said earlier, we really want to keep it glamorous here. Um, so, you know, as an example, on the left, you see the bulk bins that we usually see at Whole Foods, right? They're plastic, they're clear, 
they show the nut crumbs and the trail mix crumbs at the bottom. Um, and you know, that's not even to mention the scoop that everyone touches, which is a whole nother ick factor these days. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but on the right, we were really inspired by Folene's beautiful bulk options. They feel special and premium. We can't see the gunk. I know the shampoo is there stuck to the sides, but I certainly can't see it. So this was a really inspiration for us to think beauty first when it comes to sustainability and what that consumer has really um, come to expect. Um, we also wanted to think through um, and rethink the old renew, renew, reuse, and recycle, or it's recycle, reuse, and reduce. Um, and what do these words mean in beauty, right? It might, what are our three R's? Because they might be different um, in order to become sustainable in our industry. So um, our three R's that we've re-identified them and Alisa, our design director, um, has also even um, reimagined what the symbol could look like. Um, for us, it's reformulate the goops, um, reimagine packaging and revamp retail. So these are all the things um, that we see as transitioning um, for beauty. And we don't even wanna call it sustainability anymore. We wanna call it minimalist luxury. So um, make our consumer feel like not that she's giving up something, but that um, he or she is really getting something and um, this is a badge that they can wear. Um, you know, this makes me think, Robin, of um, something I learned in therapy. So I was having a hard time when my kids were little with like getting rid of the toys. Like I wanted them out of the house, but I felt like it's so wasteful. Like, you know, somebody paid for these toys and then um, there's all the, the, the plastic and associated items with the toys. And, um, you know, it feels wasteful to like exit them from my life. Um, even though, of course, some could be given away, a lot of the stuff does, ends up not getting given away. You know, only the good stuff gets, goes out to another family. So my therapist said, well, think of what you gain from removing these things from your life, right? So that's the luxury. The luxury is like having more space on my counter or more freedom in my brain, right? And that's what this minimalist luxury theme means to me. Like it's freedom from all this stuff and dust and crumbs, right? That you associated with Whole Foods. And now freedom and um, the pleasure and the luxury of simplification. And freedom of the garbage. I mean, look at your picture. Um, that's all hanging out in your house, right? Um, so I think that's definitely um, an emotion and a positive one that would be an outcome. Okay, I think we can go to the next slide. Okay, so um, as we've been mentioning in our brainstorm, um, we were really trying to think of ways to dramatically reduce packaging and not just the outer packaging, uh, but the components that actually dispense the products. Um, you know, how can we strip away things that we associate with feeling premium, like heavy plastics and shiny finishes and stuff like that, and, and take something classic and make it new and desirable, but um, with dramatically less uh, packaging. So new twists on old standards. We had this really great idea. What if we reformulate lipsticks and creams and shadows um, into more rigid formats uh, to reduce the need for containers to hold them? So if you see on the right, the red pencil is a classic red um, wax pencil. And what you do is you, you unravel the pencil itself, the paper on the outside, and that's all that's holding the product inside. So could we do that for lipsticks or eyeshadows um, and, and get rid of all the, the plastic that usually surrounds them? You know, Lisa, what's so interesting about this is like that could easily be a plastic skinny Marc Jacobs, whatever, lipstick, right? But yeah. that plastic, that plastic vessel ends up in the garbage or, you know, <laughs> stuck under the radiator, right? Rolling away. But, you know, that same product can be wrapped in paper and the paper is like literally melts in the, in, in the rain, right? This type of paper. So um, flimsy in a good way. Um, but I could still have the experience of using the product, like a Marc Jacobs luxury product. Yeah, absolutely. And you're left with really nothing at the end of it. It's a beautiful thing. And it can still feel premium. Um, so we took a lot of inspiration from uh, some of the things we showed earlier, like the, um, the Grove Collective, the Bar Shampoo. Uh, we also came across soap sheets, um, things that really require water to make them work. Um, 
And that el eliminates an enormous amount of packaging and plastic. You no longer need a dispenser in that case. Um, so we were trying to think of other ways we could bring that um, rehydrating to life. Um, we had this great idea inspired by the, ca uh, the candy dots that you see on the right. Um, how could we make reuse that idea for eyeshadow or foundation or perfume? Um, you could take little dots and put them in these beautiful bowls that we're, we're calling rewetting bowls, which could be brand specific um, and just add water. Um, we also thought of candy wrapped shampoo, which would save on water and shipping and packaging. If you imagine those bath bombs that are wrapped in individual wrappers that look like a piece of candy. Um, as I mentioned, um, for rewetting, uh, prestige brands <laughs> could create limited edition canisters, rewetting dishes, um, these great items that customers obsess over and photograph on social. Um, and of course, rehydrating products saves on packaging and shipping needs and resources. So I love this rewetting bowl, coll collectible rewetting bowl idea so much, um, Elisa, because think of like the reason why we buy fragrance right because of the beautiful sculptural bottle right and the gorgeous cap right we're collecting the item like the vessel sometimes more than the, the juice inside um so this gives the brand the opportunity to make these really special collectible items maybe make them limited edition right they're only available this season um they're in the in the um, voice and the creative vision of the founder or the designer and the customer will be able to collect these and they're also useful like you're literally putting your little waterless um you know dot in there adding a little water stirring it up and then you have your luxurious shampoo or body lotion or whatever it is right and it looks beautiful to keep on your on your counter much better than the plastic jugs of um, shampoo absolutely Um, and lastly, and this is, you know, not a new idea, this idea of refillables, and we talked a little bit about it earlier, um, but it really could be more widely used and it really can um, inspire um, consumer loyalty. So, you know, over here we see a compact on the right, but imagine if the brands, um, just like the rewetting bowls, had customizable designs um, for different seasons or emblazoned with your name on them. Um, that would keep people refilling their, their, uh, their compacts, um, create loyalty pro programs with options. I just said that, I'm sorry, <laughs> diversalized compacts earn a percentage off when you buy refills. Um, we talked a little bit about refillable, um, papers recycled, like the method soap refills and Tetra packs. Um, like you get your box wine in or your tomatoes in and they can have built-in dispensers, just really low waste options. So when it comes to retail, we also took um, inspiration from other categories that are doing this really well. Um, so first, you know, thinking about what that refill center might look like or that refillable, uh, make it front and center, make it a marquee display at retail so that we're bringing all of the refillable brands together. The consumer that's looking for them can find them easily. And it also rewards those brands that are pushing sustainability forward in beauty um, with premium position in the store. Um, this idea of auto dim lighting, also not new. We see it a lot in bathrooms in uh, retail, but why not take that out into the store so that if somebody isn't in a particular section in retail or in the store, the lights can go dim and then it could be act motion activated when somebody um, gets to that section. Um, and just like the freezer aisle in the grocery store, maybe the lights can come on on a display when somebody's near it. So getting even more granular on the idea. Um, we love this idea of creating a seal for retailers to market, to identify places that they've been able to be sustainable and um, reduce their carbon footprint. Um, appliance brands do a really good job of this, right? So if you've bought an energy efficient washer, you know how many gallons of water you save per year. So imagine that you're walking through Sephora and you see signage all around talking about the change that they've made and the impact that it has in the environment. So we saved 10,000, you know, plastic bags this month. Our dim lights have, our dimmed lights have saved, um, you know, this much energy. Um, or 
curbside pickup, right? This is a, I would say a positive that's come out of COVID. Think of all the shipping charge, um, shipping waste that's been saved, right? So in retail, maybe we would, um, for beauty, rebrand curbside pickup to like open door pickup, or we'd come up with a beauty um, term for it. But the idea that um, this is a practice that might be um, continued and we, they could amplify, stores can amplify how much um, shipping they're saving um, or fuel they're saving um, from not shipping and having people pick them up in person. Robin, I love the um, tracker and for, um, you know, a, a retailer like a Sephora who has, you know, hundreds of products in their store, like they can actually like have a ticker. You know how like in New York City, there's that ticker of debt, of government yeah. debt, right? Like why can't Sephora have a ticker of like, this is how much waste we're preventing from entering your lives by partner, or our brands doing the work and us doing the work as well. That's um, right. and, it, and imagine like if you, you know, when you take that purchase and you don't get a bag, you create like the next number on that ticker. So the, the customer feels like they're contributing um, to the bigger, to the bigger goal. Right. And just like I would see like my VIP points for loyalty programs, maybe I can see in my account, um, my waste saving points, right. Um, and like actually like get messages from the brand about like how I'm helping um, little by little. Right. Yeah. I think that's kind of the, the frustration, like, well, what, what can I do as one person? Right. That's right. And when we originally talked about this idea, we said this is kind of like the peer pressure idea, right? So that the retailer is showing what they're doing, but they're also a little pressuring the brands and pressuring the consumer to do their part as well. Um, so it was a little bit of like celebration, a little bit of peer pressure. We liked that about this. Mm -hmm. um, and this, Elisa, do you want to speak to this rendering? Oh, sure. Um, this is our vision of how a, um, a, a rehydratable product bar might work. Imagine that you went into a beautiful, luxurious uh, beauty store to get your, your shampoo or conditioner, and you go up to the counter and it looks, I mean, it just looks beautiful. And you pick out the I don't know that we've come up for a name for what they are. Um, shampoo gems, I think. <laughs> shampoo gems, and you pick which ones you want. And then up above, you can see displayed, there are these beautiful bowls. You pick the bowl that you want. Somebody puts it in, you know, a beautiful paper envelope with for you with, you know, a little paper bow on it, and, and you're, you're off. Um, it's just a whole new retail experience. Right. It almost feels like shopping for jewelry or for like fancy macaroons, right? Like there's a, we're replacing the, um, that kind of discovery that happens at home, right? When you open the package with the discovery and curiosity in, at store, right? You're making that, that moment really special, like you're shopping for jewelry. Great. I think that that takes us exactly to three o'clock and um, we have just concluded our presentation to all of you. So.